Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Today we're looking at something a bit different. It is not uh, malicious as far as I know. This is Hyper-V, which is a virtualization software I've showcased a few times. Initially I had some issues with it, but now I've got it working really well. But what I have, and this is really cool because we can go to Device Manager and we can see, if we load this up, NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti. Now, I do not have two 2080 Ti's. This is not pass-through. This is GPU partitioning. What that means is that despite this being a single GPU system, I am running and recording this video on my host computer with my same 2080 Ti that is going to run this benchmark. Now, I've never tried this before, so I'm actually somewhat curious what happens. Let's just do... Yeah, we'll just let it run in 4K. So I'm somewhat curious what happens if we run a graphically intensive, does it hit OBS, or I assume that the hypervisor is going to prioritize the host computer over the virtual one. So this is cool because it doesn't require multiple graphics, oh, that's, I think that's actually, if I remember, yeah, it's just because the Hyper-V viewer, and it doesn't seem to be hitting OBS, but the Hyper-V viewer for whatever reason, uh, it runs basically over RDP, and that's a drawback of this right now, is that you pretty much need to use a game streaming service if you want to actually play games in this VM. But what I thought I would test out is rather than playing games, which might be quite difficult, what we're going to do is we're going to run Premiere Pro, because that's something that you might want to do if you have a virtual machine. That's what some ordinary gamers, as an example, of someone who uses a single GPU pass-through setup but has to do so the more janky way using KVM. So let's do that. Now what's cool is right now this can only be run on a Windows 10 host. Uh, we're going to continue. This is just a weird thing that happens. I don't know why. I think it's because the way you have to install the driver, I'm going to link this and I'll read through it, uh, is really really weird because this is not officially supported by any graphics card manufacturer, and I don't think NVIDIA likes this very much because they have their own proprietary grid thing that costs literally tens of thousands of dollars that they would probably much rather you spend your money on. But I can't see them disabling this because this is the same technology Microsoft is using for WSL2, which does have legitimate consumer uses. So I don't think this is going away, and I think it's really cool because this basically gives you the ability to have a fully GPU accelerated virtual machine with the convenience of something like VMware Workstation. So here we go. So this is 4K video, this is 4K timeline, let's just do full preview quality. And you know, the performance, I think that's mainly the viewer, but it's, it's flawless. Like this is just like editing 4K on my main system. I'm not quite sure how the audio is going to be, so let's just go on Kevin McLeod's website and download some of his music, which is free and awesome. Let's just go for Pleasant Porridge? It doesn't really matter, we're not... Now the audio is the worst thing about using Hyper-V VM right now. It is not on the level of VirtualBox or VMware. I really wish, with the Hypervisor API, maybe Microsoft can allow other companies to use this, because I think Hyper-V is really powerful, but it's really not user-friendly. It's, I would say, maybe even as user-unfriendly as doing KVM QMU uh, via the command line. It is not an easy-to-use piece of software, but gets the job done well, and this is very good performance. Now let's just test out, let's just add some text, because shadow text is like a simple intensive thing you can add in Premiere that actually really slows it down. At least it did uh, many years ago when I was trying this and also had a much lower end computer. Okay, where do we... Source. I'm kind of confused. What's the layout here? Oh, it's because we have it set to learning. That's the problem. I hate, I hate how they do this, and they try to shield their library and everything on you. Like, it was so much better before. I sound like an absolute boomer saying that, but it's... Like, I'm dead serious. It was better before. So, here we go. Text. We can go... Stroke. Um, back... No, we don't want background. We do want shadow. 
because this just slay this can chug the performance a bit and let's also add some strokes in a different color we'll give that like a 12 border there you go your performance chugging text it actually seems to be holding up decently but that that should have somewhat of an effect and it's also gpu accelerated now, as much as Adobe doesn't officially support this, it does work fine because it's just using my host graphics driver. There's some weird function that's sort of baked into Windows that, allow, that allows for this. So we're going to export it in 4K, and if it can export around 1 to 1, I'd say that's a pretty good result because this doesn't have... This does have um, only... No, we're going to call this YouTube 4K Premiere Pro Test. No. Because this does only have 16 threads, when normally I would have 36 if I was actually running this, and it seems like it's running at about real time, which, given that it is running with 16 threads, is a really good result. So, from what I have read, people think that this has about, it's about 30% slower than using your GPU natively, which makes sense, because you don't want it to use 100% of your GPU. It's able to resource manage this itself, so while this is going, we can look at the actual article where Chief22 explains how this works. Hi everyone, first time posting on here. Tried my best to type this out to help anyone who wants to give this a try. A few months ago, Microsoft apparently implemented a Hyper-V function called GPU-P, more or less uh, an early release, into Windows 10 Pro, possibly Windows Server. From what I have read, ironically this only works on Windows 10 right now. Now 2021 server will support this. And what I am really personally excited about, because this would be more useful, because right now there's not a whole lot of point in video editing in a Windows 10 VM on a Windows 10 system. What there is point in doing, well, the, well there is one use for this I can think of, which is sandboxing um, software that was obtained from sketchy sources. If you wanted to see if it's legit and it needs a graphics processor, I will probably be trying that out in a future video. But what this could potentially be used for is when Microsoft enables the ability to run a Linux root partition, much like how people currently use Hyper-V or I mean KVM on Linux to pass through and do their gaming and video editing if you're Mudahar on Linux, or I mean Windows and everything else on Linux, this could allow you to do that with the convenience of VMware Workstation, where you would just need one GPU and it would be completely seamless. So to me that's the exciting aspect of this. So this is a replacement for Remote FX, which essentially allows you to split a GPU into, I think it is up to 64 pieces. It is not SRIOV, it seemingly, I think this is some sort of technology Microsoft has developed themselves that somehow works without any of that tech. I don't think you even need IOMMU, so my assumption is that this is all somehow being achieved through software, which is incredible. You need to copy and paste the DLLs, so they made a video guide, so I will link that in the description in addition to this. Uh, here's for headless. We're not doing headless, but that generally makes things a bit more annoying because you have to get your GPU to initialize on your host. So here's how this works. So you have to create a Gen 2 VM. You disable enhanced sessions and checkpoints for VMs. By default, each VM is set to one CPU core and RAM will be set to dynamic. You can change this. I personally recommend just giving yourself as many cores as you think you can spare. Maybe leave two for your host. And here's how you do all of this. Better just to read this yourself. And here is how you get competent audio. So you can set up the B cable, because otherwise the audio quality coming out of Hyper-V directly is absolute loss. It is terrible. It stutters. It's like the only thing that doesn't work well on this. So I don't, I don't recommend using that audio. I recommend using your own audio device, let's just go to my channel. Hello everybody and welcome back to another malware video. Today we're doing, uh, we're trying a different hypervisor known as using hyper There's a part. It handles static audio, like a YouTube video, reasonably well, because my understanding of RDP is that it actually 
Like, it plays the video on your computer, so I think that's why that always works pretty well. But, like, Windows alerts, they crackle. I just, I'm not a, not a huge fan of the audio stack here, so... I definitely, if you're going to use this, I recommend doing that. Here's a PowerShell script that will allow you to set this up. And the result is this, where we can have full graphics acceleration. And Premiere is actually, I would say, over RDP completely usable. Some software really isn't. I would say Premiere is completely usable over the Hyper-V viewer. And one user said in the forum that they were having an issue where their resolution was being capped at 1080p, but I, I have not had that issue. Mine, let's just see if we can show this. We can't because we're on high, because we're on RDP, but mine is running at 4K fine, so I think that sort of depends on your system. But I think that's going to be all for this video for now. This is a look at Hyper-V's GPU partitioning, a, a very exciting piece of technology for VMs, in my opinion. I think with this, you really if it does get supported properly, I think we have the potential for the, pretty much the perfect pass-through setup that is available for everyone.